Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Ceratopsians are undoubtedly one of the most famous groups of Ornithischians, thanks in large part due to the iconic status of the genus Triceratops. In addition, other genera such as Styracosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus are not only well studied, but have appeared in works of pop culture numerous times, cementing their place in the overall dinosaurian pantheon. However, it's only really the large, superficially rhino-like late Cretaceous ceratopsids of North America that have attracted most of the attention, perhaps with the exception of the well-known smaller Mongolian protoceratops. The broader clade of ceratopsia first appeared during the late Jurassic period in what is now East Asia. While derived younger forms were often quite massive, bulky herbivores with enormous skulls equipped with impressive horns and bony neck frills, the first basal ceratopsians were far smaller and more innocuous animals. Whereas triceratops and relatives were firmly quadrupedal, early forms were bipeds and lacked flashy cranial ornamentation altogether. However, even at this stage, they possessed a number of distinctive anatomical traits, particularly those of the skull, which unambiguously ally them to the far more famous late Cretaceous forms. All ceratopsians had a unique toothless projection at the tip of their upper jaw known as the rostral bone, which is not known from any other animal group. This formed a mirror image of the Ornithischian predentary bone at the tip of the lower jaw, which formed a somewhat parrot-like beak that enabled these animals to pluck and slice vegetation. They also tended to possess flaring dugal bones beneath their eyes, which gave their skulls an almost triangular appearance when seen from above. Additionally, all known ceratopsians tended to have relatively large and heavily built skulls in relation to their body size, especially when compared to other Ornithischian dinosaurs, which gave these herbivores powerful slicing bites, even in the small basal forms. The earliest known ceratopsians were the Chaoyang saurids, a family that consisted of four genera of small bipedal forms that were native to the late Jurassic of China between 160 and 148 million years ago. The oldest and best known form was the genus Yin Long, the name of which means hidden dragon in Mandarin, measuring about 1.2 meters or 3.8 feet long and weighing up to 22 pounds or 10 kilograms. It was about the size of a Scottish terrier dog. Yin Long possessed a relatively large blunt snouted skull, lacking in horns and having only the very weakly developed beginnings of a neck frill, which would have given it a somewhat turtle-like face. The skull roof was flattened and ornamented in a way similar to those of pachycephalosaurs, which demonstrates the close relationship between these two groups within the clade marginocephalia. The beak would have been sharp and useful for snipping vegetation, while the teeth were heterodont in structure, which is somewhat unusual for a herbivorous non-avian dinosaur. While the rear teeth were peg-shaped and quite uniform in size, Yin Long and other Chaoyang saurids possess distinctive premaxillary fang-like teeth near the tips of their upper jaws. Similar teeth have also been found in basal pachycephalosaurs, such as Goyocephaly and the recently described Zavacephaly, which indicates that this was a trait present in the common ancestors of both groups. Multiple specimens of Yin Long are known, ranging from young juveniles to fully grown adults which have enabled paleontologists to work out that these animals reached sexual maturity at around six years of age. It lived alongside the basal tyrannosauroid Guan Long, which was probably Yin Long's chief predator. Other Chaoyang saurids were of a generally similar size and appearance, such as Hua Lian ceratops and Chaoyang saurus itself. Perhaps the most famous of all early ceratopsians was the genus Sitakosaurus from the early Cretaceous of China, Russia, Mongolia and Thailand. This highly successful small herbivore thrived between 125 and 105 million years ago, producing up to 13 species. Due to this, hundreds of often well-preserved specimens belonging to the genus have been described, making it one of the best understood of all non-avian dinosaurs. While the different species varied in size, the type species P. mongoliensis could reach about 2 meters or 6 feet 6 inches long and weighed at least 20 kilograms when fully grown. These animals possessed relatively stocky builds and heavily derived skulls for early Cretaceous Ornithischians, being tall and blunt with powerful beaked jaws. These animals possessed teeth that were self-sharpening, although unlike the later ceratopsids, it was not able to effectively chew its food, having to swallow gastroliths instead to help digest plant matter. All Sitakosaurus species had relatively large eyes, 
which suggest a good sense of vision, useful for finding food and avoiding predators. They also had enlarged olfactory bulbs, indicating a strong sense of smell, while the curvature of the semicircular canals in the ear reveal that these animals were far more agile than later ceratopsids. Adults would have been strongly bipedal, although young juveniles seem to have been quadrupeds. These little hatchlings were highly precocial, able to walk and feed themselves shortly after birth. Large numbers of fossil juveniles have been found together several times, suggesting that these animals stuck together for safety, although it's currently unclear whether they would have been watched over by a parent or parents. These babies would have been highly vulnerable, and we know that they were preyed upon by the large badger-sized Eutriconodont Repenomamus, for example. One spectacularly preserved adult specimen, known as SMFR4970, has allowed paleontologists to deduce that Cetacosaurus was probably countershaded, with a scaly hide that was darker on the top of the body and lighter underneath. This is similar to modern forest-dwelling deer and antelope, which makes sense given that Cetacosaurus also lived in the dense forested ecosystem, where camouflage would have been a valuable trait. Additionally, this specimen possessed dense areas of pigment on the face and shoulders, hinting that these were the darkest areas of the body. It also had a row of bristle-like quills that ran down the top of the tail, which were almost certainly used for display purposes. Finally, Cetacosaurus species had comparatively large brains in relation to later ceratopsids, suggesting that these animals were capable of reasonably complex behaviour, such as nest building, bird-like sleeping patterns, social displays, and possibly parental care. All more derived ceratopsians were members of the clade Neoceratopsia, which really took off during the early Cretaceous. These were still mostly small bipedal animals that lacked horns or significant neck frills. The most basal of these may have been the genus Beg from the Ulanush formation of Mongolia between 113 and 94 million years ago. About the size of a spaniel dog, this small herbivore possessed a robust deep skull and anatomical traits midway between Cetacosaurus and more derived Neoceratopsians. Other early forms include the Chinese Archaeoceratops and Liaoceratops, the latter of which demonstrated a small yet notable bony frill that protruded backwards from the rear of the skull. While Neoceratopsians evolved in Asia, some forms migrated to other continents, such as the tiny North American genus Aquilops, known from a single skull which probably belonged to an adolescent individual. This cute little animal measured about 60 centimeters long and weighed about as much as a domestic rabbit. Adults would have been larger at about one meter long and were comparable in weight to a house cat. It was native to the cloverleaf formation of Montana roughly 107 million years ago, where it would have fed on low growing vegetation and would have kept a watchful eye out for the famous Deinonychus. Adult aquilops were also of comparable size to the contemporary carnivorous mammal Gobiconodon, which may have posed a threat to them and their young. It was potentially a close relative of the short-snouted Aurora ceratops from the early Cretaceous of China, which was significantly larger than Aquilops at around 15.5 kilograms or 34 pounds. Another possible close relation was Gracili ceratops, which was endemic to Mongolia during the Cenomanian stage of the late Cretaceous between 96 and 89 million years ago. Known only from a single fragmentary specimen that belonged to a cat-sized juvenile individual, this was a slender bipedal herbivore with a moderate but still noticeable neck frill. Adults possibly reached two meters in length and may have been comparable in size to the later Protoceratops. Other later Cretaceous basal Neoceratopsians included Yamaceratops from Santonian aged Mongolia, as well as the seemingly more derived Mosaiceratops, which inhabited what is now the Henan province of China between 94 and 72 million years ago. I honestly didn't realise that basal bipedal ceratopsians persisted this long into the late Cretaceous. Again, measuring about 1 metre or 3 feet long and weighing in at 10 kilograms or 22 pounds, this small animal possessed relatively long forelimbs, which may have enabled it to drop down on all fours while feeding or moving slowly. All ceratopsians more derived than this have been placed in the clade Euceratopsia, which contained the underrated and pretty diverse Leptoceratopsians as well as more famous animals like Protoceratops and its uncertain number of close relatives. Many of these species were more firmly quadrupedal, at least as adults, 
with protoceratops and some leptoceratopsians developing more prominent neck frills. They still lacked horns, however, with this iconic trait only appearing in the more derived ceratopsoids such as Zuniceratops. Although the massive diversification of these animals in North America would only occur within the last 20 million years or so of the Cretaceous, and is best left for another time. In conclusion then, Ceratopsians spent the majority of their history as quite small bipedal herbivores that lacked horns and expanded neck frills. They were clearly successful animals, which is probably at least in part because of their ability to handle tough vegetation, which may have been off limits to other small ornithischians. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering another very distinctive group of dinosaurs, with these being the bizarre herbivorous therizinosaurs, which I honestly can't believe I haven't discussed yet on this channel. See you again soon. Cheerio.